First off, Jeff, thank you for taking a little bit of time to talk about your projects. Congratulations on everything that, you know, everything's everything at the same time. Congratulations on the, on the 100K on the first episode. Congratulations on the deal with DOS. So many things, I mean, so many topics to talk about. So thank you for taking a little bit of time to talk about that. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So obviously, if you should do this, your 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 venture. That's what it, what the production company is behind all the different yep. projects. Um, I, I, I want to talk about the first parallel man and what can you know people that haven't seen the first episode. I mean, it's already online, but what what can they expect from it? Why why should they watch it? Um, well, it's 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 kind of a an homage to a lot of a lot of sci-fi that I grew up in loving and enjoying. I mean, there's there's a heap of Tron and Blade Runner and you know, a lot of cool references in there, you know, um, there's uh, some real, uh, there's, some, there's a little Jurassic Park nod in there, you know, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that, that, that uh, parallel universes let us explore, you know, so, um, so I think if you, if you want to see a cool propulsive romp through parallel universes with some also some cool technology, um, there's a little James Bond in there as well with the 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 uh, cool tech that the character has and stuff and so it's sort of a it's sort of a love letter to a lot of the sci-fi that I grew up loving but it also gave me a chance to tell my own story um which is the most important aspect you know to tell a story about uh this uh rogue agent who is uh he's in this this regime that's that's expanded to go take over all these different versions of the earth and uh take the resources and and enslave people and stuff like that so this guy he's gotten some information and found out the truth about them and he's trying to take them down so yeah I, i'm i'm absolutely glad you mentioned uh, you know james bond at uh, jersey park because i saw it and you see it i think you see it even with the silver you see uh, you can you see in the animations you see it in the in the theme that we're trying to present you see those different knots to you know bet the best of sci-fi action and i'm a huge fan of sci-fi anything has to do with sci-fi or, or action that's something that i'm Huge fan of, uh, but I want to talk about the casting, the amazing casting because I mean the the cast is so good. I mean, oh, starting obviously with Min Min Nguyen. Come on, yeah, she's, she's, <laughs> in she's in a role. She's awesome. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. In a role, yeah. and, uh, and not only that, John 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 Ho also on, on a role. Yep. How mm -hmm. did I mean these people are so busy? How did this come about? How did this happen? How did well, you first up, them? Yeah, you know they like the script. Um, and, uh, this was a few years back when I did this. So they, you know, they weren't quite in the same position where they are nowadays. Um, but they, uh, they all liked the script and, and we all got along well. I showed them some, pre, you know, behind the scenes, pre-pro art and everything. They're like, cool, this looks awesome. Let's do it. You know? So I got lucky. I got lucky being able to get people of that caliber to come on board the project and do it, you know? So it, it's fun. And, 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 uh, Lance Reddick was actually a friend. So that was, uh, it was good, yeah, it's good him. The thing yeah. is, the timing could have been even perfect for it, you know, for them, the 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 project to come out because I mean, you did it back back then, but they're right now they're all they're all, they're hot, they're really everywhere. Yeah. So it it helps out yeah. obviously a lot on, on the project uh, promoting promoting on, on March twenty eighth, and the animation. Did you have any? So the how how did the animation? Because again, the animation is so smooth, and it, again, you just mentioned it, it, it's it's not to different uh, uh, different pro other uh, popular projects. How did the animation came about? Did, did you sit down sit down with the animation? Yeah, no, team? I I, um, I put together my own team. Um, I had a, a group of uh, student interns that I worked with for a number of years, and they were all super super talented. And I said, hey guys, I want to do this animation. Do you think we could do it? And I uh, helped them put together the resources they needed, and it was a small team of less than ten guys, and we all pulled together and did it, and uh, and, and we did it all remotely. And uh, you know, some of the people were over out on the west coast, some on the east coast, you know, and we all worked um, and used uh, servers and different stuff, you know, to get the, the dailies and everything back and forth. But we over it took us about ten months to make that project, so you know. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm here saying wow because you just said something, and then only ten people. On, some, on something that looks that good because that, yeah. that animation it was, it was is 10 people under 10 people yeah smooth mm -hmm. i mean the animation is so smooth and so beautiful i Thank mean it's, it's incredible what, well, what you can you do. know one one thing i tried to do with it was um create a look and feel because you're going to different universes right mm -hmm. and i thought i want to create a look that the, the look that pulls them all together so so that that sort of painterly 
watercolor looking backgrounds and everything, even though you have these completely different universes, they all still have the same feel. And then, then the technology all has the same feel and then the characters have the same feel. So it's sort of like these three different layers. And the idea was to get all three of those to work and work together. And that was the part that we, we that was the challenge in the beginning was like, what are the looks of each of the worlds? What's the look of the technology? What's the look of the characters? And how do we make, we, we meld all three of those together. And I think we did a good yeah. job, I think it turned out. Yeah. Yeah, so, I have yeah. to mention the animation because I mean, you just said something that me blew my mind. I was like, I wasn't expecting you to tell me, no, we hired a bunch of people from there and that. But you, I mean, your team did a really no, good job. Inter totally internal team. Yeah, totally yeah. internal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did a really good job with it. Thank you. Um, yeah. I want to uh, wanna jump a little, talk a little bit about your, your, your project, o Oceanus Act One, which is coming out uh, April 18, right? I think it is. Yeah, it's April right. 18th. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I would talk a lot about it because another another amazing, I mean, another epic sci-fi project, but Divine Live Action, how did that come about? What can people expect from it? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big underwater, I scuba dive. I've, I've been studying underwater stuff since I was a kid. Uh, I used to watch these Jacques Cousteau stove specials. I've always been fascinated with the oceans, you know? Yeah, and uh, and I the idea of having a, an underwater city, there was actually a cartoon when I was little called Sea Lab 2020 that talked about uh, the idea of living in an undersea city. And I was like, man, that's so cool. And so, you know, but I've never, I've never felt like anyone's ever handled the undersea thing really well. You know, I mean, as you get, you know, like um, there's an old TV show, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, but it got really cheesy as time went on and, and Sequest never became what it thought it could have been. I think The Abyss is probably the best in this genre. Yeah, the movie from 1989. Um, so, you know, I, um, I wanted to tell a story with futuristic underwater technology that uh, that was a human story first and foremost, but also got to showcase what it might be like to have an undersea civilization, um, you know, in the next decade or so. And so uh, the short film was a was a taste of that, the, the, a taste of that world. And we're you know both of these projects, Parallel Man and Oceanus, were developed in full feature films on on both of them. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. I, I mean, yeah. I, I you know it's 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 just it's, it's funny because it's two different monsters, but at the same time they have something in common. You know, which uh, which is always telling this story from a human perspective, from a front perspective. So I really, I really, you know, I, I really commend you for that. Well, thank um, you. So I, I wanna before I let you go, I wanna talk about the deal with DOS. How did that come about? Because I mean, how, what was your first reaction when you, you know, the, you got the email, you got the call, hey, they're 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 buying into the project. They want their. Oh, your it was project. super like, exciting because it, it was super exciting because both of these projects, you know, my I I was able to raise independent financing and get both of them made on the own. Because I mean, you, you sit there, you, you have talent and capability, but I, I know plenty of people in Hollywood who are really talented, but they never get a shot because they can't show anybody what their vision is. And I was able to, because I, I focus more on being a business person and, and being an entrepreneur and having a, an infrastructure building my own business um, in order to be able to have the infrastructure to actually make and show my vision. So I've been uh, lucky enough to be able to do that. And the problem has been though, even though I made these two great short films, I pitched them around Hollywood and I didn't get a very good response. And, the, and it wasn't because people thought the quality was great. The problem mm -hmm. was they were too original. They were right. It's like, they were like, well, this underwater thing, there's nothing else like it. It's like, well, exactly. Or parallel man, there's nothing else like it. Well, exactly. You know, it's like, it's, it's, but in their minds, it's like, but we want it to be just like, uh, you know, Archer or Rick and Morty, or like, you know, it had to fit in this cookie cutter. And because parallel man didn't do that, I wasn't able to get it off the ground, you know? Um, and so the good thing is Dust was willing to, to put it on there. They, they encourage and try to find independent talent. So it was a perfect fit. It was a perfect mm -hmm. fit. So I was super excited because finally I got these films that I've just, you know, could not get traction on them. And I knew they were good and people told me they were good. And now we're finally getting people to see it. So it's really, it's really, it's kind of vindicating actually. Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah. mentioned something that I preach all the time. I mean, I'm sick and tired of the remakes and the recreations and reimaginations. Yeah. And why? I mean, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm such a vocal person of minorities and, and, and giving people a chance to show what they can do, much yeah. like you are. So I, I think that's one of the things that, that resonated from your projects to me. I mean, it's just, it's just different. It's something new. Like Coda, mm -hmm. Coda is different. It's not something, not something you have seen uh, differently. Typically, typically uh, when it comes to movies and when it comes to that representation, so but I'm talking about the movie Coda. So that's, I mean, I, 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 I absolutely agree with you. I think uh, a lot of people are missing the point of 
why do we want to keep the seeing the same thing? I don't want to see anything. No, I, I, I mean, so, it's just, it's, it's the same thing. I feel like it's, it's not that I, I don't like hate Marvel films or mm -hmm. anything, but I do understand mm -hmm. some of the critiques people are making of them because when that becomes the dominant form of media mm -hmm. and, and they have the exact same kind of basic formula to them over and over and over again, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, um, it, it gets tiresome, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying it shouldn't exist. It's great. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, but let's have some other stuff too, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I want to see some smarter mm -hmm. things that are more challenging, but still visually stunning. And that, mm -hmm. that's what, what I grew up with. I, I missed the stuff that was around in the sixties, seventies, early eighties, you know, to me, it's like, once you get out of the eighties film, you know, film changed and, mm -hmm. and I miss those days. And I think it's time to bring that stuff back, but use today's technology to do it. Yep. You know? yep. So uh, Jeff, yeah. before I let you go, uh, what else maybe can you give us a we have step from a future due to, uh, you know, in the future, what else, what are projects you have pending besides obviously Oceanic and, and, and Horror Man, what else maybe you can um, tell us? Yeah, I have a big film that I've been developing called uh, Persephone for a number of years. It's a, uh, a movie about the journey to the nearest star and it's a realistic science fiction movie. Um, and uh, we have some big announcements coming on that pretty soon. So that's, that's, that's one that we plan to be in production on next year. So yeah, that, uh, that sounds fun. I mean, I'm a huge fan of anything that has to do with space. So I'll be watching. Oh, you'll love it. Yeah, yeah you'll love it. <laughs> I'm going to be stuff, watching. You should just look it up. You said Persephone, it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Jeff, thank you for taking just a little bit of time to talk about this amazing project. Sure. Maybe in a fan of sci-fi. I mean, I, I knew I had to talk to you. So that again, congratulations on everything. I mean, everything happened too fast, but congratulations on everything. And and I hope, hope you for the best. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and your time. It means thank a lot. You. Thank, thank you. you.